Good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone is improving. I, I've heard, still heard some coughs, but I think it's improving. And there's some more folks out here, so this is a good sign that maybe um, that flu bug is uh, departing from us. But remember, wash your hands. Keep control of that cough. <laughs> and if you're not feeling well, please stay home. Um, but we want to, to make sure everyone stays healthy. I want to invite you to Christ United Methodist Church today. We are so delighted that you have made it today. If you are a visitor, I especially want to invite you to uh, greet others around you, tell them you're visiting today. We also have some blue bags out in our visitor center, and we hope you will take one of those home as a welcome gift for your participation in coming today. And if you have any questions whatsoever, um, you can either ask the person sitting next to you or there's information at the visitor desk for you uh, so that you can uh, find out more about our church here in Southern Hills. Um, today we have a lot of announcements and let me just go over a few of them for you. Our altar flowers today are given in by Lane and Sally Stevenson in uh, memory Yes, in memory of Becky Houston and in honor of the Chancel Choir. And aren't we lucky to have such a big choir? Aren't we? I think we need to give them a round of applause. They are, they add so much to our church life. Uh, every prayer, every Wednesday we have prayer vigil here. Um, the next one's Wednesday, February 21st at noon. Uh, it's a small 30-minute prayer uh, service that anyone can come to. If you just want some time to come and meditate, maybe your day has been especially <coughs> stressful, perhaps someone is ill, you need some quiet time, I would recommend coming at noon. Um, Everyone uh, appreciates the different prayer focuses that they have, so I'd invite you here. Easter lilies, if you ha have opened up your uh, bulletin, you're going to see that envelope inside. And remember, we are now ordering them. Uh, you can order in memory of or in honor of, and it's uh, $10 a uh, pot. I have to tell you, does everybody still have their poinsettias they picked up? Are they not the longest living poinsettias? I, I don't think we were blessed this year. Mine are just still big and tall and red. They're beautiful. Lenten luncheons. Uh, the next Lenten luncheon coming up is Summer Grove United Methodist Church. It's going to host the service on February 21st at 12 noon. This is a wonderful time to come and join with people of our community whom you may never have met before but whom you might like to meet and they are going to be serving lunch and then they'll have a very quick service so if you have that time uh, on that particular Wednesday that would be a wonderful opportunity for you to do that and you can find links uh, for directions on our church website. Meals on Wheels they're going to be offering the opportunity for service to our neighbors um, if you feel led to do this. This is a wonderful service. I have talked with churches across our area and for them Meals on Wheels is a true uh, calling and they feel it is their opportunity to help not only save someone because they have food constantly but they are visiting those who perhaps don't get visited very often at all and so this is one of the things that that Christ asked us to do, to, to serve and feed and to provide companionship. So Meals on Wheels provides all of those things. And I especially want to comment on the Laity Retreat at Wesley Center. It's a day-long retreat. Um, it's uh, February 24th, this next coming Saturday. Uh, the speaker is Demi Prentice, and they're going to be focusing on going beyond the walls of our church. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you to stretch yourself as a member of the laity. And our Grand Sweep readings are at the bottom part of that section of announcements. So if you uh, have an opportunity, you can go through those. It really doesn't take very long every day to just read a small portion of those. You'll be able to get through uh, those particular things. We're reading uh, numbers this next week, so I think you're going to enjoy that. Uh, anyone else have any announcements that they need to uh, present? Anything else? Okay, great. Once again, I welcome you, and please uh, enjoy our choral intro.
who throughout these 40 days on page 269 and up on the screen. such a hurry I forgot the call to worship and I know you don't want to forget that so let's join in the call to worship now trust in the Lord and do good and then you will live safely in the land and prosper take a ride in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires commit everything you do to the Lord trust him and he will help you he will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. If you'll join me now in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Children, come forward for the children's story time. everybody. Okay, so we've had a lot of celebrations in the past few weeks. We had New Year's, remember, with all the fireworks and the parties, and then we had Mardi Gras and all the parades, and then
then we had Valentine's Day with all the hearts and the candy, so many things to celebrate. And now it's Lent, and I don't know if y'all understand about Lent. We're going to talk about it in children's church, but maybe some of your parents have talked about giving up things, and it just seems like we're just not celebrating anymore, right? Yeah, but you know what? Today we're celebrating God, and we're going to celebrate God every day because he is an amazing God. So when you go to a party, what kind of things do y'all have at parties? What, what kind of things are there? Cake. That's a good one. Balloons. Anything else? Cupcakes. Okay, so today I brought something that we sometimes see at parties. I'm going to give y'all each one of these. Here you go. There you go. One for you. Y'all want to try them out? Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so what we're going to do is, since we're celebrating God today, I'm going to tell y'all some things that God does that are so amazing, that we're, the reasons that we celebrate God. And after I finish every one, you can blow your horn, okay? Instead of saying, yay, God, we're going to blow our horn. Okay, the first one is, God loves us. Okay. God hears us and he answers our prayers. Okay, God doesn't always answer our prayers quickly or give us what we want, but he gives us what we need. God sent Jesus to be our Savior. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. God gave us the Ten Commandments. God heals the sick. God blesses us in many ways. Y'all did great. So God is amazing, right? That, those were only a few of the things. I could have sent, spent all day telling you the amazing things God does, right? Okay, so y'all did a great job, and we're going to celebrate God all day today. So let's say a prayer. Y'all pray with me. Yeah, we're going to go to children's church. Y'all pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much. For all the amazing things you do. Please help us to celebrate you every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. You, I don't know. I tell you that was that was a that was a good celebration. I think we should be doing that more often. That's <laughs> just really great. Um, now is the time for joys and concerns. And the only um, person I have that's a change from last week, Doug Letzinger, is down at MD Anderson and is going through therapy and and treatment down there. So he is the one person I know of. Can anyone else? Does anyone else have a, a concern or a special joy? Yes. My younger brother. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Jan's younger brother has cancer now, so we'll be praying for his continued care and recovery. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, the family and the community of those 17 children that mm -hmm. were involved in the school shooting. Mm -hmm. Florida, Parkland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, Jan. Uh, my Right. Okay. So your family really needs our prayers a lot. Okay. 
anyone else? Anyone have a joy that they, they would like to express? Any anniversaries this week? No? Okay. If you'll bow your heads for a word of prayer, please. Dear Lord Jesus, we are so grateful you're with us each day. Um, we need you so, so very badly. As we walk through this life, we notice illness, we notice um, hatred, we notice problems with relationships. We need your love to help us counteract the evil that often assails us each day. Please be a healing force for all the people we are concerned about, for those who have sickness and injury. Please keep them in our prayers. For those who need your healing, we know that you are there with them. Lord God, strengthen us as your disciples so that we may better walk in your image. Let us invite friends and neighbors to come to church with us to commune and develop their own personal relationship with us. We are especially concerned about the young families and um, children in Florida after the difficult and evil things that have happened to them this past week. Be with each of them. Let them know that the prayers of the country are focused upon them. And be with the members of this church as we go forward in this next week celebrating the Lenten message. Let us be um, the best possible example of you that we can have. Because we love you, we are now going to recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. If, amen. If you'll please get out your Bibles, we're going to be looking at the book of Mark, chapter 14. Verse 17 through 26. It's also going to be up on the screen. In the evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. And as they were at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you eating with me here is going to betray me. Greatly distressed, each one of them began asking in turn, Am I the one? Am I the one? He replied, It is one of you twelve who is eating from this bowl with me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had not ever been born. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, all of them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. I tell you the truth, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. And could, could we have the ushers come forward, please?
Dear Heavenly Father, You are kind and trustworthy, and every day You gracefully provide what we need from Your abundance. We are grateful that You bring healing hope for our lives as individuals and as a faith community. Please accept these monetary gifts and offerings to strengthen our church outreach to our neighbors. May more people come to know you and your love through our ministries. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, who is our Savior. Amen. Remain stands. We join together our next hymn, number 349. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
please be seated. If you would, open up your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. I had a number of people tell me they were glad that we're through with Leviticus. So we're going to go back and go through Leviticus again just so you can make sure that you you get it fully uh, with that. So... No, I'm just teasing. You can if you want. If you want to go back and read it again, read it as much as you want. It's a great book. Leviticus 23, 1 through 8. The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. These are the Lord's appointed festivals which you are to proclaim as official days for holy assembly. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of complete rest an official day for holy assembly. It is the Lord's Sabbath day and it must be observed wherever you live. In addition to the Sabbath, these are the Lord's appointed festivals, the official days for holy assembly that are to be celebrated at their proper time each year. The Lord's Passover begins at sundown on the 14th day of the first month. On the next day, the 15th day of the month, you must begin the celebrating the festival of unleavened bread. The festival to the Lord continues for seven days, and during that time, the bread you eat must be made without yeast. On the first day of the festival, all the people must stop their ordinary work and observe an official day for a holy assembly. For seven days, you must present special gifts to the Lord. On the seventh day... The people must again stop all their ordinary work to observe an official day for holy assembly. Uh, The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds, may they be truly and utterly faithful to your word, O Lord our God, our rock and our redeemer. And we ask today that you help us to celebrate the love that you have for us through Jesus Christ. And every day, may we celebrate the love and care that you have for us. May we celebrate your Son, Jesus Christ. And may we know without a doubt that we are yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we've been reading through Leviticus, uh, every now and then I would run across someone who would ask me the question, how in the world are you going to preach on Leviticus? What are you going to preach on? What, I, what, I mean, this is crazy stuff in here. That, how are you going to preach on this book? I mean, one moment they're talking about very intimate personal details about how to take care of yourself. The next minute they have a high holy day. The next minute they're sacrificing 75 million animals. This next time they're talking about what to do in the camp when certain things are going on. What do you do when you get ill? What, uh, how are you going to do that? And I would, I would tell them kind of like what Tom Holliday uh, would, would tell us, and, and that was just skip through the whole thing. Uh, but no, no, really I'm not going to do that. But uh, today I want to remind us, because if, if you look at Leviticus, if you look at it, uh, it, it goes from ordinary to extraordinary, from ordinary to extraordinary, from ordinary to extraordinary. It's a celebration. It, it, it's a celebration of, of, of what God does in ordinary life and on worship. Life. And so we're going to look at God's high holy days. And Do you know where the, uh, where, where the word holiday comes from? Do you know where it comes from? Holy, holy day. That's right. A holiday is a holy day. So let's look at, at uh, you know, and that's what God in Leviticus is doing for people is making them holy. is helping them to be a holy people separate from the world. A people that are different. A people who, who are, are, are special to God and God and, and they live differently through the way that they live and, and he, he makes them holy. And one of the ways that He does that is through the holy days. Uh, so we're going to look at those. Uh, but first I want to start off with, with a, a, a psalm. Uh, and I want to see if you can catch who wrote this one. It's not David, so you can't cheat and say, oh, David wrote this psalm. No, he didn't write this one. Uh, so here, here's uh, this psalm uh, to start out. Um, There's a party going on right here. A celebration to last throughout the years. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We're going to celebrate your party with you. 
Come on now. Who wrote that? KC and the Sunshine Band. No, it's not KC and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> Y'all did better than the other group. They said Chicago. I was like, it's not Chicago. No, it's not Lionel Richie. But uh, it's not Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's Cool in the Gang. Cool in the Gang. And, and now, won't that song get you celebrating? I mean, just that little verse just makes me want to just kind of hop up and down and, and thank God for what's going on. I mean, that, that song gets us celebrating. I wanted to ask Ronnie if they could start that off as the choral intro this morning. He said, we probably could. Um, but they'd be singing the Lionel Richie version instead uh, of Cool Name. But, uh, you know, and, and maybe today as you're going, I bet you that song's going to kind of sneak back into your ear and it'll remind you that we're to celebrate. Uh, and, and that's who we are as God's people. A people we're, we're a people of celebration. We're to celebrate God at all times and at all places. Uh, and, and the first part that God talks about of a celebration, He talks about the Sabbath day, right? God says, uh, six days of the week you're to work. But on the seventh day, you're to make that a special day, set apart, uh, different from all the other days. And can you imagine what a gift the Sabbath would have been for people who had been slaves for over 400 years. What a gift uh, to, uh, to be able to have a day where you could just be with God and to celebrate God and what God was doing in your life. And, and uh, you know, we've kind of gotten back to the point where we don't give up work anymore. It's always following us, right? Uh, we've got phones now uh, that follow us wherever we go. So no matter where we are, what we do, wherever we, we're trying to hide from, uh, you can still get a call from work, right? Uh, at 9 o'clock at night, you're sitting down with your family, you're talking about your day, and, and you get a phone call from your boss. Hey, would you uh, get on your computer and would you send me that email that you forgot to send? Or, or I didn't find, I can't find it. Or, or hey, you know, w would you go transfer $150,000 from my account to this other account? Uh, okay. Uh, you know, we, we can't get away from work anymore. We've got our computers with us at all times, wherever we go. It's always stress that's, that's going on us. And, and God gives us the best gift of all, a day separate, a day different, where we, we, we make a day that's holy to the Lord. How different would the world be if we took time out to just celebrate God. A certain day. It doesn't have to be Sunday. Uh, but that's our traditional day where we celebrate God. But at least one day out of the week, put that cell phone away. Put the computer away. Stop having an ordinary day and make it an extraordinary day of celebration. I mean, what a gift it would have been for those people who had been slaves for all that time to just have a day of rest. I can remember when I was growing up, Saturday morning, it was great get up on Saturday morning and they used to have these things called cartoons on on Saturday morning. They don't really have cartoons anymore on Saturday morning. But what a joy it was to get up. You know, all the other days it'd be like, oh, I, I gotta get up to go to school today. Oh, it's kind of like how y'all do when y'all are coming to church. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, but on Saturday, Saturday, 5 o'clock in the morning, I get to go see uh, the Spider-Man cartoon. I get to watch the, the second part of that show that I hadn't seen. It was on, and I was excited and I'd get up and I'd go in there and I'd turn on the TV and I'd just have a great time until Dad would come in and say, all right, son, it's time to go mow the lawn. Well, Dad, don't you know this is a special day? Don't you know that Sunday is a special day to spend with your Heavenly Father? A, a, a day to, to celebrate what God has done for us. You know, a lot of us, we kind of feel like, you know, the commandment that, that uh, thou shalt have a Sabbath day, we kind of think that the commandment is thou shalt not have any fun on Sunday. <laughs> do, you, do you kind of feel that way? That that's what, what God is saying to you? Uh, I, I mean, I, I mean how, how many of y'all wake up on Sunday and you're like, oh, if I get up right now, I can make it to donut time. <laughs> And they'll have some coffee there. Maybe I could wake up. And then just a little bit later, you're, oh, if I get up now, I can make it to Sunday school. And I might be a little late, but they won't worry. I'll just come on in. Or, oh, if I get up now, I can make it to church. 
Oh, if I get up now, I could make it to lunch after church. <laughs> Has there ever been a drudgery? To... It ought to be like that Saturday morning where we go, Woohoo! Yes, I get to be with my family of faith. Yes, I get to celebrate with them what God has done with me. Yes, I get to come and thank God on us. Yes, I get to celebrate. But for how many of you is it that way? If it's not, what's wrong? What, what is, why is it not a day that you look forward to and you're excited and say, yeah, you know, I miss y'all if I don't get to see y'all at least once a week. Less... I could probably do a little less with, but, you know, everybody else, I'm excited. I'm, and when I'm not here, I miss y'all. And, and when I don't get to see, if y'all aren't at the donut time, I, I, I miss y'all not, when you're not at donut time. If I don't see you down the hallway I, or after, I mean, I miss y'all. Why? Because we're part of the body. We're, we're one with each other and we need each other to make it and to celebrate and help us in those difficult times. We need each other. So this needs to be a celebration. We need to come and, and instead of when we're singing the first hymn, instead of looking at the thing and going, Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, Lord, glory, Lord of all. Why do we sing joyful, joyful like that? Why are we excited to sing and thank God and say, Yes, we're here and we're alive and we're thankful that we're together. It's a celebration, people. This is a day that we celebrate and we celebrate together as a time to be together. And it doesn't have to be just on Sunday. Uh, pick one day to give up work and make it special to God. And you know, the rabbis, the rabbis, the old rabbis said there's only two things that you have to do on the Sabbath. Two things. You've got to do these. One is read your Bible. You, you got to look at the Torah. Study your Bible. Learn a little bit more about God. Worship God in, in, in that time together. And the second thing that you're supposed to do is have a feast. <laughs> What's y'all's feast going to be after church today? Uh, that's why we always have Sunday lunch together, right? So that you can have a feast together and celebrate what God has done and be thankful for what God has done. we got to celebrate. And so God goes on and says all the different uh, celebrations, they just list all the celebrations. Of course, they talk about them throughout all the ordinary of life. And that's kind of how it is, is that we have through the ordinary, we have extraordinary. And, and, and one of the first, the, the first festival that is not a feast, that we want, it's the only one, all the other ones are a party. The first one is the Day of Atonement. And the Day of Atonement is when the Israelites would come into the temple and the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would take blood from the perfect spotless lamb and he would take the blood and throw it on the mercy seat and, and cover everyone's sin for them on the Day of Atonement. It was a day of sadness because of their sinfulness. And they would come and they would repent. It was a day where they would come and they would repent and, and they would be freed to, from that sinfulness. We kind of had a day just like that this Wednesday. It's called Ash Wednesday. It's a day where we come and we repent of our sins. And, and, and we receive as a sign of that repentance the cross of ashes as a sign that we are, are repenting and, and we want to return to God. But for me, Ash Wednesday is a joyous day. And I thought it was great this year, if you weren't here Wednesday, to, that it was, on, it was on Valentine's Day. Because... The greatest valentine of all is God so loved the world that He sent His Son into the world. We ought to celebrate that every day. Uh, and, and we ought to celebrate the love that God had for us by changing our lives and repenting and, and not giving in to those temptations anymore. Now all the rest of them are, are, are days of celebration. Uh, the next one uh, is the, the Festival of Trumpets. And, and when the kids were up here and they got those little horns, right? And what do those little horns remind you of? It was trumpets, but what 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 holiday? What what holiday does it remind you of? New Year's. New Year's, right? Don't you blow those on New Year's? Well, that's what the festival of trumpets is. The festival of trumpets was was giving God thanks for a brand new year, for a new start. And they would come to the temple and they would get all of their little tiny horns with the. The, the stuff at the end of it and they would blow. No, they had real trumpets uh, and uh, made out of ram's horns and they would blow the horn as a symbol of their thankfulness and they would celebrate the new year together. Uh, 
Now, we go celebrate the new year, but sometimes we do it in ways that probably aren't real appropriate for what God wants us to do. But we still need to celebrate what God is doing in the new year uh, and celebrate with that. Uh, the next, uh, and that's Rosh Hashanah, the Festival of Trumpets, uh, is Rosh Hashanah uh, with that. So uh, the next one is the Festival of Weeks. And it's a harvest festival. It's the, after they've, they've harvested everything uh, and they've sold all of their harvest, they would come together and they would celebrate all that God had given them through that harvest. What, what, what holiday does that make you think of? Thanksgiving, that's right. It was a day to gather together and be thankful for all that God had blessed you with. Uh, and in the Christian church, uh, we remember a, a festival during that time, which is called what? Of the fest what was happening uh, at the festival of weeks when everyone was gathered in Jerusalem? And there they were in Jerusalem. All the disciples were gathered together in one place and they'd been praying for 40 days. Wow. That's right, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came there at the Festival of Weeks. That's why they were there. And it's the beginning of the church. Uh, and we need to celebrate that and, and be thankful for all that God has given us at all times. And, and, and that's the, where, where we, we, we celebrate that with, with thanksgiving and, and thankful for God. And we celebrate Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came into the world to give us new life and, and, and uh, the ability to, to no longer sin or give in to sin. Uh, the next one is the harvest of first fruits. Uh, and if, you, if you, have you been reading throughout the Bible, you notice that the first are very important, right? The firstborn son, the firstborn child, the firstborn animals. Uh, There's all very, very important. They were, they were uh, um, set apart for God, for a holy uh, thing. And, and the first fruits were the very first harvest that would come out, the first uh, that would come out of the ground. And they would bring these to be thankful for God for what they have. And it would culminate with them taking a sheaf of barley in the fields, wherever they were, they would cut that sheaf of barley. You know, it looks like a wheat, if you've seen wheat at the edge. Of, and they would cut off that sheaf and they would wave it and throw it and be thankful for what God. And all that wheat would fly into the air as a symbol of more blessing upon them. Uh, and and uh, it, it was a time to celebrate uh, the first uh, harvest that God gave them. There was a lady in one of the churches that I served. She wasn't a farmer, but she had lots of gardens that she would plant around her house. She had animals that she had in her house as well that they took care of. Uh, and, and whenever something would, whenever the harvest was ready for whatever it was, there would come a knock on my door. And there she would be standing. If it was time for tomatoes, there she would be with the tomatoes, with, with the first fruit that came off whatever the plants were. She would pick it and she would put it. And as God's representative, she would bring it to me as her thankfulness. And man, she had such joy on her face when she would come. And you know, if, if it was fig season, she would, she would bring me figs and she would bring me fig preserves that she had made. And she would bring, you know, and she would bring me salsa that she would make from that and, and from, from the tomatoes. And, and uh, when it was kumquat season, she would bring me kumquats. And I'd go, what in the world is a kumquat? Uh, and, and I would give them to Allison and she would eat them. Uh, and uh, so it was her joy. It was her, it was her celebration to celebrate what God is doing to bring that first uh, to, uh, to it. It's the same way that, you know, that first check that we write to put in the offering plate, it's, it's a symbol of our thankfulness for what God has given us uh, to have a job and to have life and for all the blessings that, that God has given us. It's, it's just a symbol of our thankfulness and, and, and uh, for all that, that goes on with that. The next uh, festival is the uh, Festival of Unleavened Bread, which we read about in the Scripture. It's part of the Passover celebration. Uh, and, and the Festival of Unleavened Bread is a reminder that the Israelites had to leave with haste out of Egypt. Uh, and they didn't have bread that had leaven in it. And leaven uh, is yeast. Uh, it makes the, the bread rise. And so they, they would eat unleavened bread as a symbol and a reminder of that time in the wilderness where they didn't have uh, the, the time to, to have leaven. And, and if you have uh, friends that are Jewish, even today, uh, for the festival of unleavened bread, uh, the first day, uh, the uh, mom of the house, would, t would she would clean out all the pantry of any leavening agent that there was in the, in the household. And then she would take... Uh, about seven of that leavening agent and she would place them and hide them throughout the house. 
She would hide them throughout the house. And then before dinner, all the kids would come in. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it was their job to go find the leaven. Uh, and you can imagine kids playing hide and seek. And they couldn't eat until they find the leaven. How joyous and fun and exciting it is for the kids to run through the house and try to find the leaven. And when they find it, they bring it to their mom and say, I found it. And she said, there's still more. And they go run and they find more. There's still more. And they, they go until that time. And they couldn't eat until that as a reminder of that time. Uh, Paul, Paul uses uh, leaven as, as a, a symbol of, of our own sinfulness. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 6, it, uh, it says, Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked uh, person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the festival not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but with new bread of sincerity and truth. Paul reminds the Christians that they are to be a leavening agent for good in the world. And we are to be a leavening agent of good in the world where we cast out all wickedness and bring about God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And that's our responsibility. And, and, and so the Festival of Unleavened Bread reminds us that we are to, to bring good to the world. Uh, and the last festival is the, the Festival of Passover. And you remember that as the Israelites were in Egypt and Moses came to ask Pharaoh to let them to go out and worship, uh, Pharaoh kept saying no. Pharaoh kept saying no and a new plague would come. And Pharaoh would say no and a new plague would come. And then, uh, then Pharaoh's heart was already hardened and he just kept saying no. And then finally, uh, the, the angel of death came. And the angel of death was going to come and kill every firstborn child and every firstborn animal that was there in Egypt. And God told the Israelites to take a spotless lamb and, and take this lamb and eat it and take the blood of the Lamb and put it on the doorpost of your house as a symbol that you are God's uh, children. That you are God's children. And, and if you have the blood of the Lamb on your doorpost, then the angel of death will pass over you. And so for the rest of the time, the Israelites, uh, as even today, they have the Passover festival to remind them that the angel of death passed over them because they had the blood of the Lamb on their lives. Uh, we take communion. Uh, and when we take communion, it's a, remember, it's a remembrance that the blood of the perfect Lamb, Jesus Christ, covers our lives. The blood of Jesus Christ covers us and that we can celebrate that we don't have to fear death at all because we are God's children and that we are free. Uh, and part of communion, you remember, uh, Eucharist is the, is the term for communion. It means what? Great Thanksgiving. Uh, and we, we, we remember to be thankful that we are God's children and we are free. And, and I have asked y'all to have a list of things that you are thankful for to bring each month so that you can read through that and thank God for what you do. Because so many times we come down to communion, it looks like we're the ones that have been killed. We're... We ought to be coming, skipping and hopping and going, thanks be to God that Jesus Christ died for our sins, that our sins are forgiven. Oh, thank you, God, that the angel of death will pass over us. Oh, thank you that my sinfulness, and when I've turned away from you, you still forgive me. We ought to be thankful and, and cheering and, and yelling and screaming like we would uh, at the Mardi Gras party or parade. And, and we need to be thankful that for New Year, and we, we, this ought to be the best time that we have all week and celebrate more than anything else. I think it's amazing that I would see all the people uh, on, I was watching on Facebook because I wasn't at the Mardi Gras parades because it was raining and it was cold. And I thought it was silly to stand out in the rain and the cold to get some little plastic beads. But there were people, my friends, church members who were there from 9 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night in the pouring rain in the freezing pouring rain. And they stayed out there the whole time and they looked like wet dogs. 
with the pictures that they had, and they would stand there and they would say, Throw me something, mister! And they stayed out there all day long. But on Sunday morning, they stayed home because there was a little drizzle and they didn't want to get out of bed. This ought to be the place that we get excited for and say, Oh God, throw me your love. Oh God, give me all that you can give me. God, I know I'm a sinner, but I need you and I need you more than anything. Oh, thank you so much, God, for loving me. We ought to be in here jumping up and down and jumping over pews and running around and dancing and singing. I mean, you're getting crazy, Pastor. You need to be quiet <laughs> up there. But it ought to be. Why is this not the happiest place on earth? For those who follow Jesus Christ. Why are we not so thankful for what God has given us? Why aren't we celebrating all through the days? Why aren't we shouting for joy for what God has given us? Why aren't we saying, God, thank you with all that we have by how we live? It's a celebration that lasts throughout the years. To bring your good times and your laughter too. Because we're going to celebrate a party with you. Come on now! Let's celebrate. And thank God for what God's given us. Let us pray. God, it's so easy to forget to celebrate you. It's so easy to look at what's going on in the world and go, God, this is terrible. But God, remind us today just to thank You for Your presence in our life, to thank You at all times and at all places, to give thanks to You, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We thank You so much that You sent Your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that we can celebrate, so that the blood of the Lamb covers us, so that all of our sins are forgiven, so that we don't have to fear death, so that we can celebrate all the many gifts that You've given us. Lord, help us to have thankful hearts. Help us to love You. Help us to experience the joy of our salvation. Help us to come to You with loving, caring hearts and celebrate who You are. Help us to make this the most important day of the week to celebrate Your goodness and Your joy. May we be a people who celebrate all the way, at all times and in all places, everywhere, to give thanks to You. And we give You thanks this morning. And we can't thank You enough. Fill us with Your joy. If there's sadness in us, remove it. If we're hurting, heal us. If we're given into temptation, kick that temptation out of our lives. If we're anxious or troubled, bring us your peace that passes all understanding. Help us to be a people that celebrate and have a good time. Because you've given us the greatest gift of all, the gift of life. The gift of life that is with you. The gift of new life that comes through Jesus Christ. A gift of, of, of wonder and awe and, and thanksgiving. A, a gift of, of, of the Holy Spirit that comes into our lives and changes us and, and takes away the, the guilt and the, the, the hurt and, and the sinfulness. Lord. Fill us with that joy that overflows. Fill us with the joy of our salvation. Fill us to overflowing to be thankful. Fill us so much that we can go into the world and just be a light to everyone we come in contact with. And Lord, help us to celebrate all the time and all places the love that You have for us. And thank You so much for Your Son, Jesus Christ, dying on a cross so that His blood covers us in our sinfulness and that death passes over us and sin passes over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During our last hymn, we open an altar for you as a time of prayer. If uh, you would uh, like me to pray with you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'm going to just let you pray at the altar by yourself. Um, maybe this morning you heard the good news that Jesus Christ loves and cares for you. Uh, then you can uh, come down uh, during this uh, hymn and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And you can make Him uh, start following Him and, and start celebrating Jesus and all that Jesus has done in your life. Or maybe you've been visiting this church for a while and you say, this is where I want to celebrate. This is where I want to be a family of faith. Uh, there's a card in your pew rack. You can fill that out. Bring that down with you uh, this morning and uh, uh, become part of this church family.
However, God is inviting you to respond. We pray that you will. But let's all stand together and sing our last hymn. <laughs> I want to thank all of y'all for coming and celebrating with us today, for visiting with us. I'm Pastor Mark. We're glad you're here. Uh, if you're a church member and you haven't had the opportunity to connect with us through text messages, you can do this. Uh, just send, put that number into your text message, the 318-225-7229, and then in the message part, put connect, and that'll help us to get connected to you. If you're visiting with us, uh, text hello to that same number. Uh, and it'll allow us to uh, get in contact with you a little bit better and, and let you know a little bit more about the church. Uh, if you'd like to know anything about the church, I'd love to sit down with you and talk to you about that. Uh, if you've already done the Connect, you don't have to do it again. Uh, you only have to do that once. Uh, but uh, we're so, And this is the last week we're going to have it up for the members. Uh, so if you need help with that, come by the church office. We can help you get connected. Uh, and we're thankful for all those who can. Uh, don't forget... As another way of celebrating, we have these beautiful, 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 beautiful flowers up here uh, that you can come up here after the service and take some home with you uh, in the ingenious little contraption that Lane has made uh, so that you won't get wet. Uh, so uh, take those flowers home with you today. But let us go into the world 
celebrating the love that God has through us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Shouting to the rooftops about what God has done to us and loving others the same way that God loves us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we go. Amen. Amen.